someone December 7th wow. <laughs> I called a special meeting and a session for the review of the project, the stormwater project, and the engineering updates. Perfect. Mitch, you want to hand out the uh, yes. Here's the agenda for the uh, stormwater update. Stormwater first. Here's the path this way. Here's a preliminary set of the plans for discussion purposes. Was Zach going to be here tonight? I asked him to be, but that may or may not show up. meeting here December 7th we push that up just because the timelines is going to be very tight on the, the end here when we need to bid it so we'd like to get a jump start here moving into final design before the holidays um, there's a few critical tasks that we want to, to make sure to get accomplished um, one of them being utility coordination I know you guys own your water so that that helps um, gas company center point Next is the utility coordination letters. We'll, we'll send the plans over to all the affected utilities and then they can uh, have comments on the plans to make sure there's no conflicts essentially, or if there are conflicts, how can we resolve those? Uh, Give me an example of what you'd consider a conflict from Center Point or Duke or somebody. I mean, we'll have utilities marked, right? Pipe on pipe. Something like that would be a direct conflict, and then there's a uh, more spatual space conflicts like a gas main. They'll need a certain separation as far as horizontally and vertically. They'll have some requirements on it. And they'll be depending on if it's a high pressure gas main or a low pressure gas main. Those clearances will be different. Uh, for your water main, uh, we'll want to have 10 foot horizontal separation from outer wall of pipe to outer wall of pipe. Um, that's a code requirement and 18 inch vertical separation code requirement. If we cannot meet those, there are some certain things we can do to um, to compromise, so to speak, but we'd have to have, it's going to cost a little bit more money. For example, like a water grade pipe, if with our storm sewer, if we only have 12 inches of, of separation, then we have to use a water grade type pipe, which is like a PVC C900 that you use for your water main yeah. or ductile iron. But if you get into a larger pipe, like 24 inch 
storm sewer gets very expensive quickly for that stick of pipe. Um, <coughs> and typically you go to structure to structure, you don't make those transitions in between there. So again, if you have a 100 foot run of that heavy wall pipe, it gets expensive quickly. The other thing is then we can uh, outweigh some pros and cons. Is it cheaper to uh, relocate and dive the water main underneath the storm sewer? Cheaper to relocate water main versus doing right. water grade pipe. Um, storm sewers gravity, so you don't have much choice in terms of where your elevation you right. need to be. And the other uh, concern is is rock. You know, uh, how deep do we want to go in rock? Rock is a major cost component too. So again, we would we want to weigh all yeah. those costs out to see which would be the best situation. Maybe for the long term, maybe costs. Maybe it costs more money to do one way, but for the long term, it'd be in your best interest to go another route. So we need to have those conversations. But that's what those letters would do, would go out to those utilities. But the water one is one that we'll be talking directly to you guys with since you own it. And uh, once we get in here, I'm probably gonna make some requests. I don't know if uh, Zach can, if he has, if he has a backhoe or uh, mm -hmm. access to equipment where we can maybe pothole some of these in advance and it well, may help. Yeah, that's where I was going to ask for an example is, wouldn't we kind of know, I mean, we, you guys know where we're going to put the new storm <coughs> water drain and the pipe. Wouldn't we know by the way utilities are marked right now, whether or not we're going to have issues? Horizontally, yes. And, but then we'll have the crossings, yeah. And we're going to have, to, but there's a little bit more to it than that too is uh, right away properties, trees, things of that nature, people's landscape. We'll, we'll talk about here. Would property we easements give us that right? If we get some easements, yes. And once once we have these alignments in here, we'll show you on these plans, there may be some shifts that we can do or we can get the center of the roadway. Hey, Marie, you know, but then if you go in the center of the roadway, you're tearing up more pavement versus if we can stay outside the roadway less, but then you may need easements. But we'll more, go through that. More easements than what we've already collected. Potentially, yes. Okay. Yeah. But we'll go through those and maybe some people will be conducive or not. And if they're not conducive, then we'll have to go on the roadway. You know. Right. But again, we want to try to get your most bang for your buck trying to get stormwater improvements in and not do a lot of street replacement. So right if now. these letters go out by the seventeenth of this month, what's the expected response for them? Or does the letter say you have thirty days to respond, sixty days? What's yeah, we'll put that on there. Typically, 30 days is the bare bones minimum uh, to get a response. And we haven't, Mitch, we, probably, we don't get responses within 30 days anymore. I can tell you that's very difficult. 45 days is more realistic, and heck, sometimes it, it takes months, and you don't get a response from any of the communication companies. They're the most difficult to deal with. And Centerpoint just took the recent stance if they want, if you, want them to look at it, you have to pay them to do a conflict analysis, which we well, just, we just received point that. Right now? that yes. 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 All right. And they're stockholders associated with it, and they moved to, they're owned by a Texas company now, so I'm they've a, been. I'm a stockholder in it. <laughs> well, you're, well, you're making some money then. then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they've been, it, it's been difficult working with some of these utility companies from that, that standpoint. So can we turn, if they want us to pay them to look at our plans, if they don't turn them around in a timely manner, can I charge them, them the late fees for this project and any setbacks? I mean, if I've got to do a change order because of them, why can't I say, okay, I've got to do a change order because you guys sat on your ass and didn't do anything. Here's a change order I want you to pay for. I wish we could. I have we tried it? <laughs> we've, we've have we gone to the utility regulatory commission in Indianapolis and raised you, you have the the one thing you have going for you is as long as you're within the right of way, you own the right of way. Right. So the relocation and we can get the attorney involved here and he can make his determination, but from what I've seen on other projects, if they are in the way and you're in your right of way and you're doing a street improvements project, which this is, storm sewers considered that, then the relocation would be on them. So it would not be a reimbursement agreement. Now, if they're in their own easement and then we have to do some issues, then different story. it's a different story. Okay. But 
to your point of getting them off their ass, so to speak, and move, and that's, it's very difficult, and then getting them to meet a schedule and deadline for relocating is, it's been troublesome, but we'll, we'll get to that point if it becomes necessary. I'll go home tonight and look. I, I, unless he's, he's moved on, I have a past master from my Masonic Lodge who sat as, I think, co-chairman on Utility Regulatory Commission. I'll go home and dig out his number and see if we need to make a phone call. I mean, you know me already. I'm not very patient. And, I, and the days that go by, as days go by, I get even less and less. So, so I'm not really in favor of these guys holding us up that would incur additional charges or change orders on my part for lack of what I'm going to call piss poor planning on their part, right? So I'd be glad, I'll, I'll dig out. I'll dig out Gilbert's number. If he's still on regulatory commission, I'll make a phone call. We'll be at least sending him the, the information and at least hopefully they'll respond back to us. They have been responsive, at least sending us information back. Um, I think if we take it the next step and we know key locations where we can pothole, yeah, then, then we, can, we can hopefully avert as much conflict as possible. So when do you think we'd be in that position to be able to pothole and know what we can work ahead? Hopefully here soon. We what we'd like to accomplish today is get the horizontal alignment first okay. on the plans. Right. We get agreement from everybody. We like to plan the locations here. Um, then we can give you a couple locations. We want to pothole here, pothole he, here in these locations, okay. and then we can play around with the uh, vertical alignment in okay. final design. Okay. Yep. Good question. Um, so, again, looking through the schedule here, we had preliminary design being done at January uh, 4th, but again, we want to try to compress this a little bit uh, uh, farther because as we get down to here into the bidding time period, which um, the bid recommendation and the, the bid opening document deadline is early March, and typically you want at least a two week due to the public law with the, the bidding requirements. Uh, you have to have seven days uh, before between the two advertisement legal advertisements and that gives you about two weeks total compressed time for a bare bones minimum bid opening period uh, realistically we'd probably like to get three three weeks if the contractors so uh, again just backing into that that's that's an early february advertisement to bid so that doesn't give us much time between preliminary design, final design, we want to work out some of these utility potential issues, especially with the rock and everything else we're dealing with. Okay, okay so then the big long-term schedule that's down the road then is uh, uh, construction, you know, depending on how quickly we get the everything uh, sent back to Okra and Okra releases those funds. Uh, we're looking at a rough notice to proceed June 1st. Um, we have substantial completion being five months, so that would push us about October 29th, and final completion November 28th, 2022. Any questions on the uh, schedule? And what did you say completion was, 7 2022? I didn't know. It's, it's on there. Yeah, yeah. Final, final completion, that would be everything. Okay, got it. Complete. Uh, yeah, November 28th. Essentially December 1st, yeah, 2022. Diving then into the uh, specific pr project components, we can start with Oak Street, the, the simpler of the two areas first. And you've, you've got these 11 by 17s. We've got big plan sets too. It might be easier to just, you want know, to flip one of those out, we can kind of go through them. You can flip one on that page, and I'll flip one over here so everybody has to look on the page set. 11 by 17s are hard to, hard to read. Replacement. 
in time. Uh, ultimately, we're not doing any additional improvements beyond that. This is an existing structure there. We're going to drop a new structure and then rip out the old culvert and just replace it in kind. Okay, so there's nothing major. We'll have some riprap on the downstream side. I think we're looking at an energy. Do we have a head wall on this one or not? Head wall. I think so. Uh, it's it's a very high slope line. Yeah. Is this, what street is this? That's Oak Street. Oh, oh okay. That, I know it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably where I was. Seventh Street. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's very steep. There are a few trees there. We're looking at may or may not need to be removed. We'll, we'll take a look at it. Uh, but again, well, this vertical alignment is really steep. We were just talking out in the field to try to get it uh, uh, not quite as steep because then you just have a lot of velocity that just pushes through and creates uh, erosion. So we're, we're going to be playing around with that. But that just gives you a big picture of uh, horizontal alignment, what we're doing. This is elevation of the feet. Yes. Nothing, nothing major there. Again, it's really steep over the side of the road. And we were just talking um, while we were out there a while ago was we may need to put riprap on that that slope just to protect it. All right, don't put this thing down. This one then is at the sixth in Oak Street, and we'll have property owners and uh, some more property information uh, on these. We have the names and address on these. Things. We do, yeah. The layers, it's just a printing error didn't get that, turned on. That layer got turned off in the last minute there, so I apologize with that. But that will be on the next set of plans there. Um, this one, of course, is the one that's going to lapse in the road. I drove by through there again, and I didn't want to drive over that <laughs> spot. To be honest, it's getting, it's getting bad. Um, I would say in the last six to eight months, it's got to lose. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's a matter of time before potentially it gets away there. Yeah, I agree. So the, the game plan there is, is what we would like to do, and the ideal is to just keep on chasing it and just rip it out as we go. But unfortunately, how it caddy corners across the streets, and then you have all those utilities to contend with. Uh, right now, the best route is to be on the opposite side of the road. Um, so what we're looking at doing is to uh, run it on this, that'd be on the, the west side of the road, and then cutting across uh, on 6th Street. Now with that, the old pipe would have to be uh, grout filled, be pumped, or we're just going to dig it up and rip it out and probably bring it back up and list, which may be the more ideal situation since the road's given away. That way it's got a good base to yeah. yeah. build on. Yeah, because I'm assuming... I mean, it was hard to see. I walked around to the uh, west side of the property and walked down into their backyard, and it looked like everything under the pipe, at least immediately, at the front end of the pipe was gone. It is. Right? So, again, I don't think they, whoever put the pipe in, they probably didn't put the right bed in, and there's been a lot of erosion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of it's old corrugated metal pipe, and then over the years, it just, yeah. Rose, yeah. it didn't have it doesn't have like coating on it like right. they use they do now so it's the life expectancy is much much shorter agreed in fact you probably find a lot of it already rusted through by the time you get it out both yeah. of these on both streets the bottoms are completely uh -huh. yeah, gone yeah um one note here the big maple tree we talked about that was agreement with that one property owner there to with the easement uh was to remove that large I wish I'd been here when you guys agreed to that, because I would have bought that. Yeah, it's one of those that uh, they give you an easement or whatnot. You know, I guess there's a little bit of potential give and take there. Yeah, but the give and take is he's got a trailer sitting on that corner. I've asked to be torn down and moved for months, and he hasn't budged. But yet he holds the pin to the easement to us to get the tree cut down, right? So I'm in a little different position, yeah, yeah, right, to say, okay, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine, I'll cut that tree down, you move that friggin' trailer. Because I know what he wants me to do. He wants me to finally condemn it, is what he wants, and then the town have to take it down. Well, I'm not going that route. 
He's got the money to do it, hire it and get it done. He's got the money to do the tree, hire it and get it done. So he and I may have a come to Jesus meeting on that. Well, you let us know what you guys work out right now. We're showing it removed, well, but if there's something that changes, let that's us a know. huge tree. It is huge. It's going that's going to gonna cost somebody a pretty penny. I mean, we've talked trees. Mm -hmm. You should go look at this sucker. I mean, it's it's huge and it's tall. Oh, off the top of my head, with what we've spent so far in tree trimming, I'll bet it'll cost you forty-five hundred to five grand to take that tree out. Right. Yeah. You've got power lines. You've got utilities. I agree with that statement. Oh, it's, that yeah, it'll be a monster. So I'll, I'll do a oh, knock on the door. It does sound see. to me to come and bury it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me $500 before you go do this. <laughs> Must be prepared. Uh, All right. That's fine. Well, with this location, too, just looking at it, too, uh, again, we, we put these alignments together here really quickly with the, we just got the survey information we get our geotech work and we wanted to have this meeting to kind of just shift around and these plans of course are preliminary in nature if you have anything where we can obviously shift and accommodate as necessary or we may have to with all these utilities have another structure or bump out or work around this area the main focus is it is we're going to put an outlet here we're going to come up to the intersection and tie back into this existing culvert in this location. Now, will you go under their driveway? Right now, that is the, the game plan. We'll probably take part of their driveway, so it'll have to be a, probably a cut that goes across, mm -hmm. yeah. and we'll have to replace it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then in the future, this would be set up, um, this structure would be set up where if you want to take another inlet up this way to capture, I know there's some flow that comes across here that she flows across the road and then also you know it's a steep area this would be set up where you could run the storm sewer up through there in the future or Zach or, or, or whoever you know I mean it's good to have that option yes uh, and then there will be a guardrail on this one it's not shown right now at that location to, to go around and protect it So we'll be able to try to reuse what we can, obviously, because yeah. again, riprap is not cheap. So if we 